So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. So just as we were beginning to get into the green, ordinary time of the church's year, along comes another feast. Kept today because it's one of the feast days that if they fall on the Saturday or the Monday, then we celebrate them on the Sunday. And the feast of St. Peter and Paul, the great feast in the church, the two of them have been remembered together in Rome and then the rest of the church since very, very early times. Some have seen as a, a great pair that somehow represent the, the church and its mission in their different ways both ending in Rome and there dying for Christ in the first big persecution of Christians under the Emperor Nero. We'll be hearing one of the stories of St. Peter in prison in Jerusalem and his being set free. That's our first reading for today. Can I ask you to remember in your prayers Barry Brigden, who we Remembered last week, who was very sick, but sadly died in hospital this week. May he rest in peace. I know a few of you will know him. Also, please remember Wilf Jones of Hazelhurst Road, who is very sick in hospital as well. So we prepare ourselves for this celebration, aware of our continued need of God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are the head of the body, the church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. So we give praise to God with all the angels and saints. Glory, Glory to God, to God, God in, in the highest, highest and on, and on earth, earth peace to people, people of the world. Of the world. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless, we bless you, you, we adore, we adore you, 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 we glorify, we glorify you. you. We, we give you thanks, thanks for your great glory. Great glory. Lord, Lord God, 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 King, King, King. God, God, Almighty, God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Son. Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, you take away, away the sins of the world, the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. You take, take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You, you are seated, seated at the right hand, hand, hand of the Father, have, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. one. You, you alone are the Lord. Lord. You alone are the Most, most High, high Jesus, Jesus Christ. With, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles, Peter, all, give us the noble and the holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. King Herod started persecuting certain members of the church. He beheaded James, the brother of John, and when he saw this pleased the Jews, he decided to arrest Peter as well. 
This was during the days of unleavened bread. And he put Peter in prison, assigning four squads of four soldiers each to guard him in turns. Herod meant to try Peter in public after the end of Passover week. All the time Peter was under guard, the church prayed to God for him unremittingly. On the night before Herod was to try him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with double chains, while guards kept watch at the main entrance to the prison. Then suddenly the angel of the Lord stood there and the cell was filled with light. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him. Get up, he said, hurry. And the chains fell from his hands. The angel then said, Put on your belt and sandals. After he had done this, the angel next said, Wrap your cloak round you and follow me. Peter followed him, but had no idea that what the angel did was all happening in reality. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed through two guard posts, one after the other, and reached the iron gate leading to the city. This opened of its own accord. They went through it and had walked the whole length of one street when suddenly the angel left him. It was only then that Peter came to himself. Now I know it is all true, he said. The Lord really did send his angel and has saved me from Herod and from all that the Jewish people were so certain would happen to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord rescues those who really knew him. The angel, angel of, of the Lord, Lord rescues those who revere him. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear me and be, and be glad. The, the angel of, of the, the Lord, Lord rescues, rescues those, those who revere him. him. Glorify the Lord with me. Never let us praise him. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. The, the angel of the Lord, Lord rescues those who revere him. him. This poor man called the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. The angel, the angel of, of the Lord, Lord rescues, rescues those, those who revere him. God, if he can, if he can, if he can. Allow those who revere him to rescue them. Just see that the Lord is good. He is happy, he seeks refuge in him. The angel, the angel of, of the Lord rescues, rescues those who revere him. him. Second reading, a reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. My life is already being poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day. And not only to me, but to all those who have belonged to his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me power, so that through me the whole message might be proclaimed for all the pagans to hear. And so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from all evil attempts and bring me safely 
to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You, you are Peter. Peter. And, and on this is rock, rock I will I build my church, and, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. Alleluia! 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 The Lord be with you, and, and with you your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to, you. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he's John the Baptist some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you find on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you Lord Jesus Christ. I hope many of you will have had the opportunity to go and visit the Roman origins of Manchester down near Castlefield. Manchester, of course, comes from the, the Latin Namutium. That was the name of the Roman fort when it was built. In 1978, Archaeologists were doing a dig in the area of the fort and they came across a piece of pottery and on that pottery there was an inscription and they worked it out in Latin and uh, it says in Latin Arepo the store guides the wheels with care doesn't seem to make much sense, does it not? It sounds like the sort of saying that uh, uh, Mr Cantona, the famous footballer, might say, along with many other of his uh, enigmatic sayings. But gradually they came to realise that it was not simply a mysterious saying about a sore. It actually was in the form of an acrostic that's a word square with things reading the same up and down, backwards and forwards. And in fact, it was virtually an anagram of Pater Noster plus 
the Greek letter Alpha and Omega. It was actually a Christian artifact. And it was clearly brought here well before Christianity was accepted as the religion or at least permitted. And that piece of pottery was from, they reckoned, the year 182. And it does make you wonder, doesn't it, the story behind that, how it had ended up there, who actually brought it? Was it one of the Roman soldier? Was it one of the original community of the, the army there that was actually a Christian or maybe somebody's mother had given it to him for, for good luck and protection? Who knows? There's a whole history there we know nothing about. And yet, there in this city, before it was the city that we know it, Christianity had touched it. That pottery had travelled along the roads from Rome on which the good news of the gospel was able to reach the far ends of the Roman Empire. So let's do a flashback. A flashback to the earlier days in Rome, the days when Peter and Paul were exercising their ministry there. The apostles who had a very prominent part to play in the foundations of the church, not just in Rome, but of course worldwide. Peter, with his special role, and in the gospel today, we've heard how it was his great act of faith, his great insight with the grace of God that actually made Jesus commend him as the one who would be the leader. He indeed seems to have been portrayed as the leader, the one who was decisive, that made decisions, that went out first and did things. We know he had his frailty as well, and yet at the very heart of all that was this great faith and this great allegiance to the one who, in fact, he would deny, but who Jesus forgave and in whom he saw such great potential of leadership. So Peter, the one who we've heard about in jail today and been miraculously set free. There's a wonderful phrase in that story today. It says that the angel told him to put on his belt, wrap your cloak around you, and follow me. Put on your belt and sandals, he says. And it did strike me that Peter heard similar words a few years before that. At the end of John's Gospel, that wonderful scene on the lakeside when Jesus invites Peter to feed his lambs and feed his sheep. When Jesus elicits from him once again, not simply his faith, but his love. His deep love and allegiance to Jesus. Peter, do you love me? And then at the end of that conversation, he says... When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put a belt around you and take your word you'd rather not go. That imprisonment and that being freed was to free him so that indeed he would quite soon lay down his life and go somewhere that he'd rather not go to his death and yet because of his great faith that he professed and his great love was able and willing with God's grace to do just that. Peter and alongside Peter of course the great contrast of Paul the one who had discovered Jesus as the one that he had been fighting against and yet he eventually realised through his 
experience on the road to Damascus that Jesus was the real thing, as it were. All his enthusiasm, all his zeal for his faith indeed had been fulfilled in Jesus, but he didn't have to search and fight against these Christians anymore. This was all that he'd been waiting for, and he realized that. And then he was to give all that energy to the preaching of Jesus as the source of new life, the promised Messiah, the one who was to come. Two very different characters that even clash over some of the decisions that had to be made about the ones that Paul had brought to faith because he was the one that went out and preached the good news of the gospel on his missionary journeys, while Peter would be the one at the heart of the church in Jerusalem, the source of stability, the rock, and Paul the dynamic preacher of the good news. These such different characters, and yet they would both in God's providence end up in Rome. Paul because of his trials and his appealing to Caesar because he was a Roman citizen and so he ended up there. He was put under house arrest and then as far as Christian tradition knows he was put to death in the persecution of Nero and Peter's fate will be the same not on the same day but a different day but he was put to death as well. He had ended up in Rome. There probably were Christians there already, but Peter was the acknowledged leader of the church, wherever it was. And we regard him as the origin of the line of leaders of the church, the popes through the centuries. St. Luke, who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, wrote it as the second gospel, if you like, of his, showing how by the power of God's spirit, the faith, the belief in Jesus, the early community of Christians would actually spread. And the providence that made that possible would be the empire of Rome, the empire that thought it was the most powerful institution that had ever happened in the history of the world, and it probably was that, that far um, or in, in those days. They were the ones who had paved the way to the ends of the Western world as we knew it in those days. And it would be along those roads that by God's providence, the faith would actually reach the ends of the empire. That network, I guess that was the original World Wide Web. And after Peter and Paul were put to death, of course, on their tombs, which had been venerated by the early Christians, they revered Peter and Paul and they built monuments over where they were buried that eventually would become churches when it became possible. And now we have the huge churches, the basilicas of St. Peter's and St. Paul's outside the walls. You can actually visit under the uh, Basilica of St. Peter or the excavations done over the years, going right back to those earliest times and the excavations that are considered to be the original tomb of St. Peter, and a lot of excavations in St. Paul's outside the walls coming to the same conclusion about the tomb of Paul under that basilica there. So what a contrast of lives. And yet there's a sort of... Um, Complementarity, there's a synergy, that's the word I'm looking for, um, of those two that they brought with their lives. Peter, the anchor, the leader, 
the unifier, the one with authority to make decisions, the one with the stability. And Paul pushing the boundaries, the innovator, the one who reached out, who saw how there was a need to reach out as well, that that indeed was the providence of God. There are lessons there for us as we continue our journey as church. That dynamic contrast. We do need solid foundations, a centre of unity and oversight, that stability, that preservation of the real tradition of the church. And we find that in the one who succeeds Peter from age to age, our Holy Fathers, the Popes. But at the same time, we need that dynamic, that sense of actually reaching out, pushing the boundaries and uh, finding new ways of preaching the gospel, of actually touching the reality of civilization in our own days, evangelizing the very structures of our societies in as much and as far as that is possible. And that's not just something needed in the context of the universal church, but even locally. And I'm sure that the current situation that we find ourselves in has really pushed us to reflect on the ways that we actually need to respond to the needs of the times, to push the boundaries, to find how we today can take the good news of the gospel along the many, many channels and means of communication that we have at our disposal because of the gift of technology and what potential it has. And even locally in our own churches and dioceses and deaneries, how do we actually find ways of being heralds of the good news in word and in action? That's the same challenge we have today as Peter and Paul and the Christians of that early church had themselves. Today, as we celebrate the feast of Peter and Paul, we pray that they will continue to inspire us in our own days. So we profess the faith that we share with the Apostles. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, our Lord who was conceived, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit born of the Virgin, of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, died, and was buried. buried. He, he descended, descended into hell. hell. On the On third, third day, he rose again from the dead. The dead. He, he ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right, right hand of God, God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living, the living and the dead. dead. I, believe I believe in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, resurrection of, the body, of the body, and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now with faith and trust in God, we bring before him our needs, the needs of the church and of the world. We pray for po Pope Francis, successor of St. Peter, that he may continue, like Peter, to encourage us all in living our faith in word and action. And so we pray. Stay, Stay with us, Lord, on our journey. We pray that as lockdown restrictions begin to ease, 
we may resume activities with a heightened awareness and responsibility in caring for our common home. May we be grateful for the beauty that surrounds us and mindful of the continued need to protect and care for it. And so we pray. We pray that the two great apostles, Peter and Paul, may continue to inspire us as we remember that they were early leaders of our faith and the very foundations on which the church was built. We give thanks today for our own church, our parish community and our priests who continue to shepherd us. And so we pray, stay Amen. with us, Lord, on our journey. journey. We pray for those who are unemployed and those experiencing job insecurities as they may find the need, may, as they can find the support they need as they take the next steps available to them. May they be blessed by new opportunities as they arise and find the peace of Christ in their hearts and mind. And so we pray. Stay, Stay with us, Lord, Lord, on our, our journey. journey. We pray for families as they come back together. May they experience joy and happiness in their hearts as they reunite, reunite with loved ones. We also give thanks for those who surround us and pray for their health and well-being. And so we pray. Stay, Stay with us, Lord, Lord, on our journey. journey. For those we know who are sick, either at home or receiving care elsewhere, renew them in body and spirit, especially Emily Martin, Pat Bradley, Joan Heaton, Doreen Flynn, Dennis and Margaret Hobson, Una O'Grady, Alice Thompson, Joe Yellop, Maureen Roberts, Vincent Duffy, Frank Flynn, Wilfred Jones, Helen and Dawn Sheridan Smith, Tommy Brady, Marie Maher, Walter Cochran, Janet Tilsley, Lillian Clare, Joan Rushford, Adela Ramsbottom, Sister Kavina, Sister Teresa, Bill Kenny. And so we pray, stay with us, pray Lord, with us Lord, Lord, on our journey. journey. For those who have gone before us, that they may now know the fullness of life with God, free of fear and the burdens they carried in this life. Especially those who have died recently. Barry Brigden, Joseph Clark, Sheila Marsden, Patricia Geary, Jim Reed, Derek Tilsley, Lorraine Vale, Jack Robinson, baby Charlie Robinson. And for those whose anniversaries are at this time, Arthur Tattersall, Dennis Stevens, Joseph Jackson, Ethel Noon. And so we pray. Stay with us, Lord, Lord, on our our journey. journey. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our own cares and concerns and for those we have promised to pray for. How we make our prayers in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread to offer you, which earth has given, and <coughs> it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, God forever. forever. So let's pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, your hands for, the for the praise and glory of his name, for our, for our good, good and the good of all his holy church. His holy church. May the prayers of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of this sacrament and we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a special preface for the feast and I'm using the first Eucharistic prayer that is known also as the Roman canon that uh, celebrates all the apostles the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift up them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so, each in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, or Pope, John, or Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, for whom we now pray. And for all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, 
and blessed Joseph her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to you, his heavenly Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we, we eat, eat this bread and drink, and drink, drink this cup, cup, we proclaim, we proclaim your, your death, death O oh Lord, Lord, until you until come you again. Come again. again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and the rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, 
and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Dominus, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. United with God's family around the world and through history, and those who have gone before us, we are able to pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy, thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, give us this day, day our day daily bread, our daily and bread, give us and our trespasses, as, as we forgive and those who trespass against us, us and, and lead us not, not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us, us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory and the are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. And aware that we are called to be channels of peace wherever we travel in our lives, it might not be the extent of Peter and Paul. But nevertheless, we are called to be ambassadors of peace. And that peace we now share with each other. God bless. Peace be with you. 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 Peace be with Lamb of God, God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof, my roof but only say the word, the word and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed.
we make our spiritual communion with God and with each other. My Jesus, My Jesus, Jesus I, I believe you are, you are present in the, in the most holy sacrament. sacrament. I love, I love you, you above, above all things, things and I desire to receive, to receive you into my soul. Since, since I cannot, I cannot at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never, Never permit me to, to be separated, separated from, from you. Amen. Amen. And we say together the communion antiphon just to give us some food for reflection during these quiet moments. Peter, Peter said to Jesus, you, you are, are the Christ, Christ the Son, the Son of, of the living God. God. And, and Jesus, Jesus replied, you are, you are Peter, Peter, and, and upon this rock, rock I will build, build my church. church. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church that, persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, and we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I hope you're all on the newsletter um, mailing list, but do really read uh, carefully. I put on it the first of all the letter from the archbishops regarding the reopening of our churches from the fourth of July. And please note, as I've said in my own note on the newsletter. That's not going to mean every church will be open on that day. It will be a very gradual reopening um, and lots to be done before we can reopen and it will be at the discretion of the local parishes as to whether uh, we're able, plus the, um, they have to be approved for opening by all our health and safety uh, people in the diocese so that they come up to the... Um, standards that we need in uh, the midst of the pandemic so watch this space and i'll keep you informed as to where we're up to as regards to that just struck me actually um but that uh, acros acrostic that was found in um rome and manchester uh, the christians that uh, may well have come with the uh, roman legions there's no way that they would probably be able to get to mass it just made me wonder, you know, how they sustained their faith. Just a question that you might think about, um, because when we can't actually physically come together, then we do find other ways of relating to our God and to each other. And um, by the grace of God, we can do that in lots of ways. So maybe that uh, can encourage us. Um, if you are old enough to remember, the papal visit back in uh, whatever it was, 82, 82, wasn't it? 82, 82. 82. 82. 82. 
the um, I was looking. Every parish had one uh, for a while. But it, it's disappeared from here. But there was a vestment, a diocesan vestment, and there was a cross on that, and it was uh, based on that acrostic actually. And uh, on the big throne uh, or the seat, the presidential chair that uh, Pope uh, Pope John Paul II sat on during uh, the service at Eaton Park. That was the extract, the little uh, papyrus with the one of the earliest written um, verses of part of St. John's Gospel. And uh, so um, that, uh, <clears throat> that acrostic has um, certainly made its mark. And uh, yeah, I wonder what things people will find in another 2,000 years and wonder about from our own generation. Yeah. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be, to be to God. God. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I, I guess I, I need to say to uh, Terry and Eileen and Sister Jo as well, uh, congratulations on your team's success. 